I've been wicked busy making cardboard guinea pig tanks. Um, but I wanted to just put this video together real quick to show you some of the stuff that I have in store for 2021 coming up right here. Check this out. Here's our first one. This is still in pretty good shape, pretty tarnished. This bridge is interesting. I don't think that's stock. 20 frets. And here's the worst of it. See that this was broken clean off at the heel and it's a pretty pro looking resto job. I mean they use a stainless steel screw, you know. These still look surprisingly nice. The back looks great. The top is not bad. I mean you can see these striations in the finish but they're not cracks in the wood, they're just cracks in the finish. There's a few chips and dings. And of course the neck angle is not, not even close to correct right now. This is a late 1950s, early 1960s Framus archtop guitar. These were made in Germany, and you can see that this has been pretty efficiently debadged. Um, and it is difficult to prove without, uh, beyond certainty, that it is in fact a Framus, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> there is a little bit of a label in there that's been peeled up that you can see some German writing. Uh, other Framuses of the period have similar, uh, you know, inlay work, similar headstock shape, similar binding, the finishes, the parts, everything makes me believe that it is actually a Framus. And according to the Goodwill site that I bought it off of, they had an expert look at it that, that also concluded it was a Framus. Um, these are great guitars. They're not super valuable. Sometimes you'll see people asking thousands of dollars for them in pristine condition, but most of the time you can pick these up for, you know, anywhere from five to $750, $900, depending on the condition, um, if they've been, you know, re restored in a working condition. Um, this one I paid $127 for, and you can see it needs a ton of work. Um, obviously the neck, is the biggest problem that needs to be repaired and reset and put on. And someone had cut this hole in the middle, which is the biggest detriment to the value. But because this hole is already here, that means I can do whatever the heck I want to this guitar without feeling bad about destroying an antique or vintage instrument. So I'm going to use this hole as a benefit to the instrument. I'm gonna try to keep it looking as original as possible. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about this veneer, if I'm gonna replace it or repair it. Um, I like the tuners. Uh, I like I like a lot of the stuff. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Um, not quite sure yet. We'll find out as we dig in. Let's open another box. This box is from Ukraine. Very excited about these. I want to use those again. So this one goes here. The Soviet era guitars used different cables than us. They had these multi-pin cables that actually had a lot of potential uh, functionality, but it, you know, the idea didn't last or whatever. A lot of these guitars have been retrofitted to quarter inch jacks. What I have here is a cable adapter. So you can adapt it into a quarter inch jack. And then I also have this cable here that has already been adapted. So I haven't put these instruments together yet, obviously, but this is cool. Uh, this is the volume here, which I really like that, that design. And this turns this pickup on and off. This turns this pickup on and off. 
and then these are tone. So this one goes to this. See, here's a tone drop, and then. Tone drop seems to be working. Everything, I mean, obviously I haven't put it together yet. Uh, the bridge is missing a part uh, and, you know, kind of a disaster, sort of a terrible design. Uh, the neck, you know, obviously has seen better days, but um, I have no doubt in my mind that I'll be able to put this together and make it play. Uh, the pickup, or I'm sorry, the, the pick guard is cracked and ugly. Um, so I'm gonna replace that, build a new bridge for it, see if I can make some sort of wang bar um, to go in here, clean up the electronics and try to keep all the original electronics because they're wicked cool. I might convert this to a quarter inch jack if I feel confident when I get in there. We'll see. But um, this one is, is a beautiful little guitar. The neck feels good. It's a little chunky. It's like basically the same thickness all the way down. Uh, the tuners are terrible. I'll probably replace them. These are just, just garbage. Um, but you know, what I'm excited about for these is not necessarily keeping them original, but making them fully functioning guitars and keeping that vibe. I love the wood on this. It looks like a mahogany of some sort. Um, I, you know, there's a, there's a, a flaw there. We'll see. I might, I might sand this all down and refinish it because this wood is gorgeous. Uh, very light, uh, very comfortable guitar. This guitar is going to be a player. No doubt about it. I want to try it. <laughs> Vance wants to try it. It looks like a good size for me. It is a good size for a kid. It's uh, it's a little bit smaller than most guitars and nice and light. I'm thinking a wood pick guard for this. What do you think? Maybe a hall. You could do your record. You could do your record thing. That I'd have to use two records because the record's too small. I'm thinking. I'm thinking hollow core door for this bad boy. Yeah, that would look cool. I mean, but like it. We're just it black. Would really be far apart from like this wood though. Yeah. Right? It should just be black. Black plastic or black wood? Black plastic or black wood. What does this do? Uh, those are tone drops. Now let's check out the next one. This is a big heavy guitar. The headstock is heavy. Um, it's got this like sort of square profile to the neck. It's really wide. Can I um, feel how heavy it is? Yeah. Oh wow, this is a chunky. It has much there's still garbage but the tuners are much nicer uh i'll probably leave these you see like there's so much so, the machining is just i take that back i take that back i might not leave those so this is um this is 1.72 inches at the nut and it's a zero fret which i like that one is also a zero fret this is <laughs> i gotta have to well, you'll see, you'll see future in future videos what's going on here. <laughs> this is interesting. Um, two inches, so. Yeah, we're, we're about the same as a Western guitar here. Our scale length is about 25 and a half inches. So we have a 25 and a half inch scale length, whereas this one was at yeah, 22, 23 inches. I mean, it's in pretty good shape considering it still has the original wiring, but you see all these switches and stuff? This is supposedly has some sort of built-in onboard um, effects. And so we're just going to plug it in. Whoa, they're like loose. Yeah, just yeah, gentle with it. So I thought they would like click into place. Oh. See? Okay. <laughs> this is so messed up. Check it out. This is interesting. Check it out. Wait. This, this when all these switches are down, these switches and this switch, everything's off. We turn this switch on, it makes them all up, but then these flip up to turn it off. So these are actually running opposite of that one. What? And then this one runs that. Yep, and then off. See? What? Yeah, they got them backwards. I told myself that I wasn't gonna string this up before doing work on it, but I think we gotta string this one up. <laughs> I just started taking this back off to, uh, mount the neck and I realized we need a 9 volt battery so maybe some things will make more sense. Apparently 9 volt batteries are a different size <laughs> in Russia so we'll have to see what happens.
When I bought these Soviet guitars, I also picked up these two pickups. They're like surface mount. I bought these because I figured I could use them for just about any project, but this project in particular was one I was thinking these might work good for because traditionally jazz box pickups float uh, and these are nice and thin. And so once I get this all up and running, I think I can float at least one. I'll probably only do one actually for looks floated out of some kind of base out of that hole, create something cool. I was able to get these tossed into the box without it costing me any more in shipping, so it was totally worth it because they were pretty wicked. I love making guitar videos, but I don't want to keep making the same old guitar video over and over again. So I thought by buying these old instruments uh, and doing some kind of creative uh, reinventing of them and restoring of them, it would give me an opportunity to make some content that's a little bit different than my other content that uh, hopefully you'll all find interesting. So there's going to be videos about these guitars coming up. One of them is already in the works, which I didn't show you yet. If you have any ideas for what you'd like to see done to any of these instruments, leave those ideas in the comments below too. I already have some ideas of my own um, and none of them are set in stone. I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon with these guitars and you know some other stuff too, of course. All right, thanks a lot and be good. Yes. Can I say something to the camera? Someone here wants to plug their channel. Go ahead. Can you check out my giant guinea pig tank? Uh, just look up Vance Maker, and I built a giant guinea pig tank while my dad was busy making little ones. I made a big one. It's, it's really funny, and it's worth the watch. Bye.